I guarantee you this line is older than David right here. And I always tell him, I was like, you know who you should talk to? I'm like, David Karcher. <laughs> and, I always, and I always preface, I was like, don't be taken aback that he's young. He knows what he's doing. He said, man, Mr. Jimmy, why do you call him? You kill him. Kill him. You're like, you're like Billy the Kid. You know, you're too gone. You, you outfish us. You outfish everybody. You fish more than us. He said, you're the killer. You kill all the fish. And he smiled. And I thought that was kind of cool. He was smiling. Wade fishing while everybody else is playing on floats and rafts out in, out in the water on the beach. <laughs> Dave was there holding a fly rod, Nick, <laughs> water up to his neck. And they got little kids playing over here, and he's steadily fly fishing. Hi, my name's David. I am 14 years old. I started fly fishing seven years ago, and I'm a member of New Orleans Fly Fishers. So I've seen David for quite a while and I think it's really cool what he does, you know. That's kind of how it started for me, was just, that was the only real fly fishing there was when I was a kid. It was throwing, you know, little poppers around City Park, like, we more into it than I know most guys that say they're fly fishermen. They're not fly fishermen like this kid. Hey, I'm Anthony Pugel here with Pugel and Sporting Goods in Metairie, Louisiana. I want to give you a little bit of information about a young fella who's very, very passionate about the outdoors, especially fishing, uh, fly fishing, of course. I went to one of the fly tying classes, and there's this young man, uh, eight years old, sitting there tying flies, David Karcher. Uh, I did not teach David anything about fly fishing. He came to me when he was seven and said he wanted to fly fish. He was eight years old. Here's this little, this little small skinny kid with this big nine foot fly rod in his hand. Right away you can tell that he's super passionate about what he does. Super effective, super efficient. Being a New Orleanian, David, uh, we fish local, he's a young fella, he don't have a boat, he don't drive. So he tends to visit waterways that he has more easy access to, canals, parks, stuff like that. There's a puddle of water anywhere. He's gonna fish it. We had a picture uh, a few weeks back of a bass this big. He caught underneath the boathouse out at the, the yacht club at West End Park. If we go to a restaurant that has water, he brings a rod and puts it at the table with him. Fishing the one is different because uh, you got your spot outside and then you just get a little hungry and uh, you step out into the Cafe du Monde to get some beignets and chocolate milk. So uh, yeah, uh, all those trout streams, are they're, they're in a Cafe du Monde outside. So I don't know, this is, this is next level fishing. Just insane fishery. One of the things that he most excels at is targeting carp, ties very uh, effective carp flies. He asked if, you know, if he could, if I could sell them in the store. And I said, of course. I said, but let's let's go over a couple business rules. So a week later, sure enough, he came in. He had his pack and slip with all his little baits on there. He had his wholesale. He had suggested retail, uh, and then he had an invoice. He had net thirty terms. David brings his knowledge of carp to his fly tying 
and so I had actually had to approach David and let him know that if he had flies he wanted to put in the shop, I would be more than happy to, to have them here. It's got a little business card that I kill this fly. They're very successful in my shop. I've been carrying them for a few years now. I'm proud and happy to have David's stuff here. The flies that I sell them run out. Like they don't have any more, so I have to re I'll have to retie some and then sell them back, sell them more back. So these are one of David's signature flies. It's the carp killer. The thread work on these is very, very advanced for a person of, of David's age. He's better than a lot of the, the middle-aged guys I know. I remember I went to the fly shops and all, almost all they had were grass carp flies. In the canals around here, it's all common carp. And I looked up common carp cat patterns and they were all just like bully boogers and stuff like that. And I really wanted to make a just common carp fly that could flow, flow around here. And especially since here the conditions are very different. So what'd you got? I lost one gar and like five minutes till like it was too dark to see. Uh-huh. I hooked this my biggest carp of all time. Are you serious? Yeah. <laughs> well that's good. Oh, giant carp. Let me tell you about the big gear tournament. We had a contest a few years back. Like the bird watchers have a big show. Or the big year, and that's what we call it, the big year. Big year was basically catch as many species as you can on the fly rod. Uh, everything from cockahoe minnows that we use for bait fishing up to bluegills and bass. So, but anyway, David uh, came in second. I got first. David won it straight up. He had either 32 or 36 species. The next nearest person was probably 15 or 16 fish away. It used to be an age limit for New Orleans fly fishers. And whenever I wanted to join, they had to do a vote. And it passed, so that was good. But yeah, because I've learned a lot from the club, so I'm very happy I got let in. Very happy. The sport needs to be, um, needs to be open to everyone that wants to do it. Les, what do you think about carp? Carp? Well, I've been up close to them. They're common gross. It's a big deal to get on top of that little tube thing. The drain pipe or whatever it is, like I've gone on top of those to get the carp. And people would honk, honk at me as I was like with the net, like going out there. They'd be like, hey, yeah. I'm like, oh my gosh, it's so embarrassing. But basically, I, basically, that net got destroyed by some guards of carp, and I had to get a new net, and I got this little net that I used for...